he had to lead uh, French resistance, he had to accept the hated communist and the communist, the French communists hated the goal very much. They'll spit me out like a cherry stone, Sihanouk predicted soon after joining the coalition. Now there were smiles for the camera, but there was never trust on either side. By the time of this visit in 1973, the Khmer Rouge had grown from a few hundred guerrillas to an army of over 50,000. Their use for Sihanouk was over, and even as they hosted their royal guest, the Khmer Rouge was secretly purging his diehard supporters from their ranks. The prince himself had little stomach for life in the jungle war zones. With some relief, as well as misgivings, Sihanouk went back into exile to live out the war in Peking. Pol Pot was not only duping Sihanouk, he was also playing a double game with his allies, the communist Vietnamese. When he met with Hanoi's leaders, again there were smiles for the camera. But behind the scenes, there was plotting and paranoia on both sides. Only China would remain as a trusted ally. Indeed, China's backing was crucial once Pol Pot split with the Vietnamese midway through the war. Little was known of the split at the time, so from but ten years later, Hanoi's foreign minister Nguyen Co Tuc uh, would heap scorn on the Khmer Rouge leaders. So when the, the coup d'état de, the was occurred by Le Nguyen against Sihanouk, they were in a very weak positions. So they asked the Vietnamese to come in. In March 1970, to help them to build up their armies. Pol Pot had uh, follow the great cultural revolution from China. And Pol Pot said that he will bring the revolution in Cambodia too. And Pol Pot, the army could not be in the within for some months, you know. But they are very ambitious, they say that they could stand. So we have left, and uh, London had uh, made use this time to launch a big offensive. Pol Pot uh, think they, they could deal with uh, so, so London. They have concentrated all their forces against London. And a very big defeat for Pol Pot. because they were encircled nearby Angkor. So in, the, in, in, in such a situation, they have asked Vietnamese to come again. So this they have come again and help them, and this time we have destroyed a big part of London forces. And London forces must concentrate all in the, in the city. Since then, so London could not uh, have any other big offensive against Pol Pot. Pol Pot, in fact, had built his army from nothing in less than two years. After 1971, he incensed the Vietnamese by refusing to let them call the shots for the rest of the war. The Khmer Rouge would even turn their guns on the Vietnamese rather than serve under Hanoi's thumb. Behind the Khmer Rouge lines, every man, woman and child was pressed to the limit in a fanatical drive for self-reliance and the earliest possible victory. They vowed they would beat Lon Nol on their own to avoid ending up as Vietnamese puppets. As the Khmer Rouge lashed out, it was clear that Lon Nol's army was no longer fighting the Vietnamese. So this was civil. Equipped by America, Lon Nol's army had firepower, but it was losing ground in the countryside. The Lon Nol troops were under continuous siege with little medical backup. Their courage was taken for granted. What they lacked were honest leaders. For months on end, some battalions were left to fight without pay or supplies, while their officers stayed away in the towns, making the most of corruption. In the face of mounting disasters, Lon Nol continued to live in a fantasy. 
He was partly paralyzed by a stroke, but doggedly backed by America, he refused to step down. Most of Lon Nol's generals amassed personal fortunes. Payrolls were forged for tens of thousands of phantom troops who simply didn't exist as defenders. Others at the top were selling supplies and even weapons to the enemy. It was hardly surprising that soldiers returned from the front demanding free food and payoffs. 